Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Juki DX2000 QVP. Did you know that QVP stands for Quilt Virtuoso Pro? And so we are going to talk about how to use this machine for quilting. Now, quilting has two aspects to it. One is the quilt piecing, which is where you're putting your fabrics together like this in various shapes. And then the other part is the free motion quilting or the quilting that you do on the surface where you have the top of your quilt, your batting and your backing and you're attaching those together with stitching. So you can do that in various different ways. One is with free motion quilting and this is what free motion quilting looks like right here. This is an example of it. So to start with, if you're doing quilt piecing, you want to have that good even quarter inch seam. Now some people, if they're using metric, they'll have like a seven millimeter. So you can do either one of those depending on which stitch you choose. Okay, so to start with, for quilt piecing for a quarter inch, if you go over here to your touch screen and touch this one right here, number three, that's gonna give you a quarter inch from the stitching line to the edge of your foot. And that's using your regular zigzag foot. You don't have to use a special foot. Now, if you want to use a foot that has like a, a little flange, a little guide on the side, which you can do, and I would recommend this uh, baby lock uh, foot here that has the guide on the side. I'll show you what that looks like here, this guy here. But if you're going to do that, make sure you use your stitch number one, which is your regular standard center stitch. So what this is going to do is as you sew, you put the edge of your fabric right next to that little guide and as you stitch down the middle, it's going to give you a nice quarter inch seam allowance. This also has a little bit of room here, so if you need to move your needle to get a scant quarter inch, you can do that. Just make sure that once you move that, turn your hand wheel slowly and watch where the needle comes. You don't want the needle touching the foot at all. Okay, so quarter inch piecing is right here. Now when it goes to quarter inch piecing, it also shortens the stitch length. When you're doing quilt piecing, you want to have a shorter stitch length. That's because you're not adding a back stitch at the end. So the shorter stitch length means there's more stitches there and those stitches kind of help anchor the stitches to uh, keep them from coming undone. So a longer stitch length, think basting. When you have where you want the stitches to come out easily, you'll lengthen your stitches, right? So the opposite is true when you shorten your stitches they're going to be less likely to fray and come loose. That's why this is down to 2.0 and when you're here, if you're going to use this foot, shorten this down to about 2.0. 1.8 is an also a common stitch length for quilting. Okay, so once you have your, your quilt top together, now it's time to free motion quilt. For that, you use this foot here. Now this is the uh, foot that you use for doing the free motion quilting that I just showed you right here. And this is the kind of foot that floats. There are feet that you can get for your machine or for other machines that kind of jump. Maybe you're familiar with those. They have a little piece that attaches here and every time the needle goes up, the foot goes up. This one kind of floats. I really prefer this kind because this makes everything seem much smoother. The fabric is moving less. It's uh, at least not moving up and down as much. It's just more smooth. And you can adjust this with this little screw right up here to make it higher or lower depending on the thickness of your batting. Some batting is very lofty, like some of your older polyester battings are very lofty. And you might use those in like baby blankets or something like that. Some is very thin like this. This is a quilting, a, uh, I think it's probably Quilter's Dream. It's a cotton batting that's fairly thin and so you'd want to lower your um, foot height here. Now I'm going to show you how to put this on. So to start with, we're going to take this off here. Now the book is going to say, turn off your machine before you do all this, but I'm going to leave it on just so that we have light to see what I'm doing lift up my presser foot. I lifted it up using my knee lifter and by the way use your knee lifter. It's going to be a real help to you 
doing your free motion quilting because that way you can keep both hands and your eyes right up here and just use your knee lifter with your knee to lift up your presser foot. Okay, so let's put this on. So notice I took that off, that the entire ankle. And we put this on here like that, get it started. Take my screwdriver and tighten it up. Always tighten it up with the screwdriver, never just finger tight. Now this here is in stitch number one. So I'm gonna show you how to put it into free motion quilting. So what we're gonna do is use this stitch right up here. This says F, F means free motion quilting. Stitch 01, let's see, let's get into that category right there. So we're gonna start out with this right here. We're gonna go down to where it has those little uh, frets on the side and that means it's like uh, you can do, um, that in that category you can do uh, like applique and stuff like that. But we're, we're gonna choose Stitch number one. Now it chooses that right off because that's the first one. I could also go into stitch number two, oh two, and what that's going to do is zigzag. This zigzag width is adjusted so that the needle will not hit the foot at all. There's a wide enough hole here so you can actually do free motion quilting using this foot and using a zigzag. But I'm just going to go back to oh one. There we go. And it, there's no stitch length because we also need to lower the feed dogs. So pull off your accessory tray, lower the feed dogs, and there you go. That's ready for free motion quilting. So right now, if I put my presser foot down, which is already down, there's a lot of play in there. So I'm going to lower this down because we want it to just barely move like that. Now there's another way, see that little symbol up there? That means this automatically comes on, that's the float function, but I can change how much that floats. I go over here to that, oops, back it up, there we go. All right, I don't know, I guess I didn't change that, that's okay. Let me get out of that. Okay, there we go, float function. Okay, now we can change this right here. Okay, so this, knob, which was the length knob, now becomes how much float function there is. If I have it all the way down, that's really low, up a little higher. So a combination of using this here to change the float function height and using this little screw on the side can make it so I can sew fairly lofty batting or fairly thin batting, but you want to have this so it it's pretty low down onto the fabric so it moves evenly. Now to start, we need to have this thread through that hole there. That's an easy way to do that. One stitch like that. And also you can use that to bring up your um, thread. I'm going to do that. Bring up my thread. One more stitch. There we go. Okay. This way you want to have your threads come up through the top, especially if you're going to have your free motion quilting showing on both the back and the front. An example of that would be if you're sewing a baby blanket because both sides are going to be visible as opposed to a bedspread or some a quilt that you're going to just see the top surface of. So in this case, we have these uh, um, two threads, both the bobbin thread and the top thread, up at the top, then we can take a few stitches or we can just start sewing and then just tie them later and using a large eyed needle, put those threads between the layers and it's all nice and neat that way. I usually like to start with taking a few stitches. Now for free motion quilting, your speed is based on how much you press on the foot control and how much you move your fabric. So to get a little more control, I'm slowing down my speed slider to this. That way I can keep my foot all the way down on the pedal and not go too fast. So I'm gonna make a couple stitches right here. Then I'm gonna start, here we go. Now to me, that looks like I'm making kind of too big of stitches. So I'm gonna speed that up just a little bit. There we go, all right. There we go. And it takes practice, but as you can see, that is free motion quilting. 
So practice this. Get a piece of fabric, quilting type fabric, a piece of batting, and a, p a piece of fabric on the back. You need to have all, of, all three of those. Um, and practice your free motion quilting motifs, design circles, swirls, um, stipple, which is basically a meandering stitch. I don't know if y'all yeah, kind of like this. That's a meandering stitch. That's a stipple. And try different quilting patterns that you've seen. Um, maybe try even some of these little um, motifs that you see up here. Well, for free motion quilting, notice when the needle goes down, this lifts up a little bit. When the needle goes up, it comes back down. It's always going to be that way so that when you take a stitch, the fabric will be able to move with your hands. I also recommend that you get grippy gloves. We have gloves here at the store that have these grips on the fingertips and you can get them according to your size. They have a little chart on the back for your hand so you know you got the correct length of, of, uh, of gloves. And that way it helps you grip so you're not having to hang on. It's going to help make free motion much more easy to do. Okay, another thing that you can do for quilting is using your walking foot. Now the walking foot is nice for fabrics that have thicknesses that where they, the top tends to move forward like this because of the drag of the foot. Well, what this does is it prevents that drag so every time the needle goes down, it keeps the foot from dragging on the fabric. So this would be good. Of course, you would raise your feed dogs and you can stitch in the ditch or do a, a quarter inch away from, say, your stitching lines on your quilt blocks like that. So this is another good way to do that. Now, when you attach this, make sure that that is around the needle bar. And I'm gonna show you how to attach that right now. So let's start out with this. So we're going to be using this. We're going to put our feed dogs back up like that. Now notice they don't come back up right away until we take a stitch. I'm going to put this down, take a single stitch. That little click that you heard was, means that those feed dogs are back up again. I'm going to take this back, back off. And you can see how this is a, a great little foot. Lots of ways to uh, adjust it. When you put this on, lift this up, that little fork, put that right around the needle bar. God, I don't want to lift this up. Here we go. Right around the needle clamp bar. And then down here, I need to make that screw a little bit looser. There we go. Make sure that's all the way on, kind of hugging your presser bar. All right, come on. I'm going to do it with my fingernails. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, again, always screwdriver tight. Okay, now we've got where you can just do your regular old stitching this way and you can lengthen your stitch. I would recommend that if you are sewing through a lot of thick layers that you lengthen that stitch. The problem with having your stitches too short is it will cause your, your quilt to scrunch up a lot. You want to have a good length of stitch when you're doing, I would say maybe at least three, but maybe up to even five. That would be fine. Um, you can move your, your um, you can even do a zigzag if you want to. There is enough room to do a zigzag. Just make sure you don't do a really wide zigzag because this is this foot's not meant for a really wide, but your standard zigzag right here is great for quilting. So this is how you can use your Quilt Virtuoso Pro machine for quilting and sewing wonderful quilts. It's a great versatile machine to have for quilting. We have a lot of other videos on using this machine and how to set it up. So. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.